Hello everyone! Today, I'm going to present a bandwidth utilization, particularly in multiplexing and spreading from the Chapter 6 of Data Communication and Networking by Furusan. Multiplexing. According to Furusan, whenever the bandwidth of uh, medium linking two devices is greater than the bandwidth needs of the devices, the link can be shared. Multiplexing is a set of techniques that allows simultaneous transmission of multiple signals across a single data link. As data and telecommunications usage increases, the traffic also increases. Therefore, there are four different multiplexing techniques that will be discussed in this presentation. First, frequency division multiplexing. Second, wavelength division multiplexing. Third, Synchronous time division multiplexing and lastly stati statistical time division multiplexing. In figure 6.1, a typical multiplex system with n lines with mocks transfer the stream on n channels at the receiver. The DMOX isolates the stream and directs them to the comparing lines. Take note, the word link refers to the physical path while channel refers to the portion of a link that carries a transmission between a given pair of lines. One link can have many N lines. In addition, multiplexing play the vital role in the data communications of many because of many aspects to reduce the number of electrical connections of bleed to reduce the bandwidth between the users to increase the capacity of the channel to increase the transmission speed to make the signal secure to make scalable and to make cost efficiency in figure 6.2 shows the three basic multiplexing techniques number one frequency division multiplexing number two wavelength division multiplexing and number three time division multiplexing the first two techniques are designed for analog signals while the third for digital signals in figure 6.3, a typical frequency division multiplexing that illustrates the transmission path is divided into three parts, each representing the channel that carries one transmission. If DM can be applied when the bandwidth of a link is greater than the combined bandwidths of the signals to be transmitted. Figure 6.4 is a conceptual illustration of FDM multiplexing process. Inside the multiplexer are three signals, modulates different carrier frequencies F1, F2, and F3. The resulting modulated signals are then combined into a single composite signal that is sent out over the media link that has a bandwidth to accumulate it. At the receiver, figure 6.5 illustrates FDM demultiplexing process. The demultiplexer uses a series of filters to decompose the multiplex signal or signals then pass to a demodulator that separates from their carriers and passes them to the output lines. Example 6.1. Assume that a voice channel occupies a bandwidth of 4 kHz. We need to combine three voice channels into link with a bandwidth of 12 kHz from 20 to 32 kHz. Show the configuration using the frequency domain. Assume there are no guard bands. Solution. In figure 6.6, .6, three voice channels at 4 kHz 
frequency is the 20 to 24 kilohertz bandwidth for the first channel 24 to 28 kilohertz bandwidth for the second channel and 28 to 32 kilohertz bandwidth for the second channel then shift and combine at the receiver each channel receives the entire signal then filter and ships the first channel uses a filter that passes frequencies from 20 to 24 and discards any other frequencies the second channel uses filter that passes frequencies between 24 to 28 and the third channel uses a filter that passes to 28 to 32 kilohertz each channel then shifts the frequency to start from zero example 6.2 five channels each with the 100 kilohertz bandwidth are to be multiplexed together what is the minimum bandwidth of the link if there is a need for a guard band of 10 kilohertz between the channels to prevent interference solution five channels times 100 times 100 kilohertz plus four guard band times four kilohertz per guard band equals 500 kilohertz as shown in this figure 6.7 Figure 6.9 shows the hierarchical system used by et and and made up of group, supergroup, master group, and jumbo group. In this analog hierarchy, 12 voice channels are multiplexed into a higher bandwidth line to create a group. There are four multiplexing stages from 12 voice channels inputs to 3600 voice channels output after passing the four stages analog hierarchy multiplexing other applications of 50m is frequency modulation radio broadcasting as you can see in figure 6.9a a typical FM band operating at frequencies from 88 MHz to 108 MHz at 20 kHz bandwidth of each channel. Figure 6.10 gives a conceptual view of FDM multiplexer and demultiplexer. Very narrow bands of light from different sources are combined to make a wider band of light at the receiver the signals are separated by the multiplexer wavelength division multiplexing involved optical signals transmitted through fiber optic channels prism in wdm multiplexer and demultiplexer although wdm technology is very complex the basic idea is very simple the combining and splitting of light sources are easily handled by a prism, as shown in figure 6.11. Using this technique, a multiplexer can be made to combine a several input beams of light, each combining a narrow band of frequencies into one output beam of a wider band of frequencies. The demultiplexer can also be made to reverse the process. Time division multiplexing in figure 6.12 gives us a conceptual view of TDM. It is digital process that allows several connections to share the high bandwidth of a link. However, the link is shown section by time rather than by frequency. Synchronous Time Division Multiplexing In synchronous TDM, a round of data units 
from its input connection is collected into a frame as shown in figure 6.13. The data rate of the link is three times the data rate of a connection. The data rate of the output link must be in n times the data rate of a connection to guarantee the flow of data. So in, in the figure also, it represents the data prior to multiplexing at three times the size of data after multiplexing. Example 6.6. .6. Figure 6.1 shows synchronous TDM with four 1 Mbps data stream inputs and 1 data stream for output. The unit of data is 1 bit. Find A, the input bit rate, B, the output bit rate, C, the output bit rate, and the output D, the output frame rate. Solution. We can answer the questions as follows. A. The input bitrate duration in the inverse of the bitrate 1 over 1 Mbps equals 1 microsecond. Letter B. The output bitrate is one port of the input bit duration or one port microsecond. Letter C. The output bitrate in the inverse of the output bit duration or 1 over 4 microsecond or 4 Mbps or 4 megabit per second. This can also be deduced from the fact that the output rate is 4 times as fast as any input rate. So the output rate it becomes 4 times 1 Mbps or 4 megabit per second. Letter D. The frame rate is always the same as any input rate. So the frame rate is 1 million frames per second because we are sending 4 bits of each frame. We can verify the result of the previous question by multiplying the frame rate by the number of bits per frame. Interleaving. The process of taking a group bits of each input line for multiplexing called interleaving. We interleave bits 1 minus n from each input onto one output. In figure 6.15 is the representation of interleaving. It can be visualized as two fast rotating switches. One of the multiplexing side and the other on the demultiplexing side. Two switches are synchronized and rotate at the same speed with opposite direction. Example 6.8. Four channels are multiplexed using TDM. Each channel sends 100 bytes per second and we multiplex one byte per channel. Show the frame traveling on the link, the size of the frame, the duration of a frame, the frame rate and the bit rate for the link. Solution. The multiplexer is shown in figure 6.16. Each frame carries one byte from each channel. The size of each frame, therefore, is four bytes or 32 bits because each channel is sending 100 bytes per second and a frame carries one byte from each channel. The frame rate must be 100 frames per second. The bit rate is equal to 100 times 32 equals 3200 bit per second. Empty slots. The empty slots in synchronous CDM is not as efficient as it could be. In figure 6.8 shows a case which one of the input line has no data. to send and one slot in another input line has discontinuous data. 
Furthermore, the first output frame has three slots filled. The second frame has two slots filled. And the third frame has three slots filled. As you can see in this figure, no frame is full. Data rate management. One problem with TDM is how to handle disparity in the input data rates because not all inputs links may be have the same data rate. Some links may be slower, there may be several input link speeds. There are three stages or strategies or combination of them that can be used to overcome the data rate mismatch. Multi-level multiplexing, multiple slot allocate, allocation, and pulse shifting. For multi-level multiplexing, is a technique used when the data rate of the input line is multiple of others. For example, in figure 6.19, we have two inputs of 20 kbps and three inputs for 40 kbps. The first two input lines can be multiplexed together to provide data rate equal to the last three. A second level of multiplexing can create an output of 160 kilobit per second. Multiple slot allocation. Sometimes it it is more efficient to allot more than one slot in a frame to a single input line. For example, we have an input line that has a data rate that is a multiple of another input as reflected in figure 6.20. The input line of 20 kbps or 50 kbps can be given two slots in the output by inserting a serial to parallel converter in the line to make two inputs out of one. False stuffing. Sometimes the bit rates of sources are not multiple integers of each other. One solution is to make the highest input data rate, the dominant data rate, and the dummy bits to the input lines with lower rates. This technique is called pulse stuffing, bit padding, or bit stuffing. The idea is deflected in figure 6.21. The input of the data rate is uh, of 46 kbps is pulse stuff to increase the rate of 50 kbps. Now, multiplexing can be take place. Frame synchronizing. The implementation of TDM is not as simple as FDM. Synchronization between the multiplexer and the multiplexer is a major issue. In most cases, this synchronization information consists of one bit per frame, alternating between 0 and 1 as shown in figure 6.22. If the multiplexer and the demultiplexer are not synchronize a bit belonging to one channel may receive by the wrong channel. For this reason, one or more synchronization bits are usually added to the beginning of each frame. These bits called frame bi framing bits follow a pattern frame to frame that allows the multiplexer to synchronize with the incoming stream so that it can separate the time slots accurately. Example 6.11 Two channels, one with a bit rate of 100 kilobit per second and other with a bit rate of 200 kilobit per second are to be multiplexed. How this can be achieved? What is the frame rate? What is the frame duration? What is the bit rate of the link? Solution We can allocate one slot of the first 
to the first channel and two slots to the second channel. Each frame carries three bits. The frame rate is 100,000 frames per second because it carries one bit from the first channel. The bit rate is 100,000 frames per second times three bits per frame or 300 kilobits per second. Digital service signals. Like an analog hierarchy, as discussed earlier, telephone companies implement TDM through hierarchy of digital signals called digital signal or DS service for digital hierarchy. Figure 6.23 shows the data rates supported by its level. The values of D is the 0, D is the 1, D is the 2, D is the 3, and D is the 4 is computed based on given parameters. For D is the 1, 24 times 24 times 64 kbps plus 8 kilobit per second of overhead equals 1.54 mbps. For DS-2, 96 times 64 kbps plus 168 kbps of overhead equals 6.312 mbps. For DS-3, 672 times 64 kbps plus 1.368 mbps overhead equals 44.376 mbps. And lastly, 4032 times 64 kbps plus 16.128 mbps equals 274.176 mbps for DS-3. D is the zero, D is the one, and so on are the names of services. The telephone companies use T lines, T does one to T does four. These lines with capacity precisely match to the data rates of D is the one and D is the four uh, services as shown in table 6.1. So far, only T-1 and T-3 lines are commercially available. T lines for analog transmission. In figure 6.24 shows the representation of illus and illustration of T lines for analog transmission. This is how a 24 voice channels can be multiplexed onto T line T lines are digital lines designed for the transmission of digital data, audio, or video. Frame structure. The T1 frame used on a T-1 line is usually 193 bits divided into 24 of 8 bits each plus 1 extra bit for synchronization. Therefore, 24 times 8 plus 1 equals 193 as shown in the figure 6.25. In other words, each slot contains one signal segment from each channel. 24 segments are interleaved in one frame. If a T-1 line carries 8,000 frames, the data rate is 1.54 mbps or equivalent to 193 times 8000 equals 1.544 mbps the capacity of the line e line frames e line frames is a european use a version of t lines called e lines table 6.2 shows the e lines and their capacities two systems are conceptually identical but their capacities differ. Inefficient use of bandwidth. Sometimes an input link may have no data to transmit. When data happens, one or more slots on the output link will go unused. 
that is wasteful of bandwidth. Statistical time division multiplexing. Number of in, a, in statistical time division multiplexing, the number of slots in each frame is less than the number of input lines. The multiplexer checks each input line in a round robin fashion. It allocates a slot for an input line if the line has data to send. Otherwise, it skips the line and checks the next line. Figure 6.0. 26 shows the time slot comparison. In synchronous TDM, there is no need for addressing. Synchronization and pre-assigned relationships between the input and outputs serve as address. In statistical TDM or statistical multiplexing, there is no fixed relationship between the inputs and outputs because there is no pre-assigned or reserved slots. Spread Spectrum In Spread Spectrum, we combine different sources to fit into a larger bandwidth. In wireless applications, station must be able to share medium without interception by an eavesdropper and without even subject to jamming from malicious intruder. To achieve these goals, spread spectrum techniques add redundancy. The spreads of original spectrum needed for each station. Figure 6.27 shows the idea of spread spectrum that achieves the, its goals through two principles. Number one, bandwidth allocated of each station needs to be far larger than what is needed by allows redundant this allows redundancy number two the expanding of original bandwidth b to the bandwidth bss must be done by the process of independent of the original signal the figure also shows the original bandwidth b and the spread a spreaded bandwidth BSS, the spreading code is a series of numbers that look random but are actually a pattern. Two techniques to spread the bandwidth. Frequency hopping, spread spectrum or FHSS. Direct sequence spread spectrum or DSS. Frequency hopping, spread spectrum. Uses different Carrier frequencies that are modulated by the source signal and one time and the signal modulates one carrier frequency. At the next moment, the signal modulates another carrier frequency. Although, the modulation is done using one carrier frequency at a time. M frequencies are used in the long run, the bandwidth occupied by the source after spreading the bandwidth. Figure 6.28 shows a general layout of FHSS, a pseudo-random code generator called pseudo-random noise or PN creates a key bit pattern for every hopping period. The frequency table uses the pattern to find the frequencies to be used for this hopping period and passes it to the frequency synthesizer. The frequency synthesizer creates signal of that frequency. The frequency synthesizer and the source signal modulates its carrier signal. If it's SS frequency selection. For illustration purposes, there are eight hopping frequencies. The pattern for this station is 101-111-001-000-010-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-110-
qubit pattern selected is 111 with which selects the 900 kilohertz carrier after eight hoppings the pattern repeats starting from oh no, and then eight pattern is 100 the frequency is 600 kilohertz after eight hoppings the pattern repeats starting from 1 Zero 01 or 300 kilohertz. FSS, FHSS cycles. Figure 6.30 shows the signal hops around from carrier to carrier. Assuming that the required bandwidth of the original signal is 100 kilohertz. If the intruder tries to intercept the transmitted signal, they can only access a small piece of data because they does not know the spreading sequence to quickly adapt to the next half. Direct sequence spread spectrum expands the bandwidth of the original signal but the process is different. In DSS, we replace each data bit with in bits using spreading code. In other words, each bit is assigned a code of in bits called chips where the chip rate is n times that of the data bit. Figure 6.2 shows the DSS. In figure 6.32, it illustrates that the original signal passes through the chips a generator then the output becomes spread signal. As an example, let us consider the sequence used in wireless LAN. The famous Barker sequence where n is 1 1. Assume that the original signal of the chips in in the chip generator use polar non zero encoding. In figure 6.33, it shows the chips and the result of multiplying the original data by the chips to get the spread signal. In a graph, the original the original signal code is 1 1 and therefore the spreading code is 11 chips having the pattern of 10110111000 in this graph the shaded graph called chips with in bits the spread signal can provide privacy if the intruder does not know the code it also provides the immunity against interference if each station uses a different code that's all and that's the end of my presentation thank you so much for the time and listening god bless